What kind of communicator would I be if I didn't let you know it's International Left Hander Day? Yay, that's my superpower. What's yours? <laughs> I just learned that and that completely changed my outlook for today. No, actually, today is wonderful. I'm super excited. Tomorrow I am uh, I'm going to Pokey Bolton's wedding to Patrick, and it has been a world, whirlwind courtship, whatever. I guess that what happens when you get a little older, you know, not this three years thing. And it's going to be an outdoor wedding, so that's fine. And one of the things that's going, the thing that's so great about this is it's not like a 20 or 30 year old getting married where it has to be all uptight. This is going to be a party, starting with drinks before the, even the ceremony. And the other thing that was really cool is on the property, she's getting married at her house, on the property, quilts are going to be being hung up by all the quilters that are going to be there. So it's just a total, total party. Can't wait. I'll show you the two quilts that I'm going to take. She wanted quilts that just represented fun and wonderfulness and all that. And so this one... I call surprise, I don't even know if there's a top and a bottom, but it's uh, it's on cotton, but then it's silk dupiani, and it just makes me think of like a party, right? And then I was out at the office, and I looked at Suzanne's office, and I go, whoa, okay, what about this quilt? You guys haven't seen this quilt. I don't even know what I made it for, if you want me to be quite honest. But, oh, here we go, sorry. Okay. Whoop. So I think that's a little bit about love, right? I think this was inspired by an old, old quilt, an antique quilt. So then I think I'm going to put a couple more quilts in the um, car just in case so that, you know, if they need more, they've got it. And the, the other really great news is that I don't have to worry about Sparrow because we have friends coming and so they can babysit the house and Sparrow. Yay. So after we're done here, we'll be taking off pretty soon. I'm kind of running around frantically. It's like when you don't travel, you're out of the loop of the whole darn thing and then um, trying to do... Uh, okay, what do I need to take? Whereas in the olden days, it was just completely rote. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so the other thing is when I was out getting this quilt, I remembered this quilt, and it ties back to our talk about solids. This quilt was designed because, I think it was a Robert Kaufman bundle, I'm not sure, Look, I love solids, okay? And I showed you solids that we have in our store on Wednesday, but we had a bunch of fabrics that weren't moving. And I said, well, give me that bundle. And this is what I came up with. Of course, I had to add white to it. So I got hold of Kristen and I said, hey, do, I knew a pattern was made for this because it came with the bundle. And she said, <coughs> excuse me, I asked her if, we still had the pattern, and she did, so Kristen got it up on the site yesterday, so thank you so much for that, Kristen. Oh, oh, let me just say, too, we get a lesson from Brie today on the curved rulers. I learned a lot, to tell you the truth. All right, and then some of you are asking about um, circle crop that I showed, I guess, on Wednesday. There is not a pattern for this, but sometimes I have to come up with Monday, Wednesday, Fridays that I consider tap dancing a little bit. And before we get into paper piecing, I might have to tap dance because we're having problems getting some fabric in. It, I, I don't care what industry you're in. This whole trying to, let's put it this way. I went to the store yesterday to buy new underwear. I haven't done this like in however long, I'm embarrassed to say. And they didn't have, I mean, they were out of everything. So I think this is across the board right now. Uh, even like our acrylic rulers, I, I mean, we, aren't having, we are not having a problem getting them, but there was an issue because of all the plastic shields that were put in supermarkets and all that stuff. Everything is kind of scarce. It's kind of 
weird to tell you the truth. So maybe when I tap dance, I could do that for you. I could show you, I can't, there is no pattern, but I could show you the circles, how to make them. I could show you how to do the border and all that good stuff. So what's the next thing? Okay, Sandra um, sent me this picture and this was made from two different fat quarter bundles that her friends gave her. Sandra, it is it is exquisite. It's not just good, it is exquisite. Thank you for sending that to me. I think we can all give her a thumbs up on this beautiful creation. And compared to the neutrals that I showed on Monday, look how far they've come. I mean, they're just great. And then Joyce uh, got hold of me and so look at that bedroom. You've got the grays. You've got the topes. I mean, everything about that imagery is perfect. Talking to someone who used to have to stage things for our magazine. I mean, even if you pay attention to what's going on outside the window, the way, oh, it's just perfect. And the fact there's an A there means that I can claim it as my own. It's just beautiful. And then one last thing, but not last at all, is the scavenger hunt that we're doing on the site. When I'm done with the live today, on the front page, on the top, there'll be a button you can click that will take you on the scavenger hunt. And why do you even care about the scavenger hunt? Well, three people are going to win a box of fabric that I have culled from my collection. And they are not mixed colors, so you get what you get. But this, some pretty good stuff is in there, if I don't say so myself. I say so myself. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm super excited about these new rulers with Quilter Select. And honestly, I know how to use the straight one inside and out, upside down, sideways and backwards. I, I love this ruler. And I, as I mentioned the other day, I even use it when I'm using my walking foot. And so somebody said, could I please give lessons on this? Well, the answer is no, because <laughs> I have to learn it too. And then I called one educator and that educator um, uh, told me to go to another educator. And the other educator said, no, you need to go to Brie. Now, who Brie is, is she runs the Quilter Select Division out of Knoxville, Tennessee. <clears throat> and so she gets this ruler. <clears throat> and I asked her, excuse me, if she would be so kind as to do a series of videos, all right, on, on these rulers, on all the different things you can do with them. So we're going to meet Brie. And she, we're going to start with clamshells, which is one of the basic shapes you can do with this. And people, I, I actually, I learned, I'm like going, oh, okay, I get it. So Brie, you did a really great job. I have to tell you, Brie has been under the weather and um, she made this video even while under the weather. She went in to get tested and she was negative and she said, well, could you please look in my ear because something is weird. And they looked in her ear and it's a massive infection. So this is Brie on a bad day. And I think she's adorable looking like a best day. So meet Brie Hickman of Quilters Select. Hi there, my name is Bree. I'm with Quilter Select from RK Distributing, and I'm really excited to share with you guys today a little bit about our brand new clamshell quilting rulers. They are, like I said, brand new, and they we've got four different sizes. They are six millimeters thick, so they are for use with a long arm, or you can use them on your sit-down machine, your domestic machine, as long as it's got a high shank and you've got a ruler quilting foot. You do need that quarter inch. Uh, clearance around the foot, but uh, there's so many things you can do with these. We've worked really hard to make them uh, as versatile as possible and as easy to use as possible. So let's talk about these rulers really quick a little bit. They do have our Quilter Select non-slip coating on the back, which is really what makes them a fantastic machine quilting ruler because it does not move. When you set it down where you want it to be, it stays there which is critical when you are machine quilting with rulers. Uh, the other thing that we've done is we've added a whole bunch of extra lines so you can, uh, you can really line this up where you need it to be, which enables you to make so many different shapes and really make it fit your quilt. 
So let's take a look at some of the things you can do with these and uh, some of the shapes you can make with them and how you can use them to best effect. So like I said, we've got these in four different sizes. Now each of these has, a, uh, has two different sides to them. They've got the small side and the big side. And the number here tells you what the diameter of, of this arc is gonna be. So this, for example, is gonna be a five inch arc when it's all stitched out. And the opposite side is always gonna be a size that coordinates with the, with the big size. So in this case, we've got five inch and two and a half. So you, this is gonna be half the size of this. And we've got, gosh, you really, you should probably get them in all of the sizes because you can do so many different things with them, nestling them together. It's just, the possibilities are endless. So let's talk a little bit about how to use these. First thing I'm gonna suggest is getting one of these. This is our Quilters Select Ruler Handle. It's a really simple little thing, but oh my gosh, it makes things so much easier. There's a couple of things this will do to help. It helps to reposition the rulers, which is also why we've got these holes in there, just to make it a little easier to pick the ruler up and move it around. Because like I said before, it's got the non-slip coating. So when you have it where you want it, it's not gonna go anywhere. So if you're trying to move it along, something to help makes a big difference. So this, you just stick it on your ruler. It's not designed for uh, necessarily holding your ruler down. It's really designed, you still hold your ruler the same way you normally would, but then it's just really easy to pick it up and move it along as you're quilting. So some of the shapes we can make with this, of course, it's a clamshell ruler. So you can do, you can do clamshells, you can do orange peels. This, I was just playing to see what different shapes I could do. You could get really cool borders, you could do circles, you can just kind of nest arcs together and then fill it in with a smaller arc. You can do things like apple cores. And, oh gosh, this is one that I did that I had all sorts of fun with using a lot of different sizes. Um, I'm gonna, only gonna cover some of the more basic shapes today. I'm just trying to show you how versatile these rulers can be. You can do so much with them. You know, clamshells within clamshells, or this would be a really fun border on a quilt. And you can use these as all of the quilting, you can use these just sort of as an outline and go back in and fill it in with your own micro quilting or other fun things down as you go along. Uh, but what I love most about ruler quilting is that it makes it so easy to get really great patterns that actually fit your quilt. Because it's all well and good to have those, those really neat uh, program patterns on the machines, but we are all human every quarter inch is every so, ever so slightly different so even if in theory your design matches up perfectly with your quilt top it's not necessarily going to match up perfectly when you actually stitch it out if you go with something computerized but if you're using the rulers you can you can kind of just gently shift the ruler as you go along to make sure that that design actually matches up with your quilt as you go along to make sure that you know, you get everything to fit and it makes your quilt look the best that it possibly can. So that is what I love about ruler quilting. Now let's talk about how we actually do this. So I've got a piece of fabric loaded on here and I've just drawn some lines using my Quilter Select self erase marker, which means that this is gonna go away all by itself. I can use the, the eraser end of the marker to get rid of it. It also just washes out, but love this thing and it's perfect for marking these lines just don't mark your lines and then come back two weeks later because they will be gone first things first you need to make sure that you have a ruler quilting foot on your machine whether it's a long arm or a domestic machine it needs to be a ruler quilting foot and it needs to have a quarter inch of clearance all the way around including this back side so that means it works best with high shank machines the reason for that is because the way these rulers are made so it, it nestles right into these curves and they, the curve is calculated to have that quarter inch added around it. So to get that full, in this case, six inch diameter on the arc, you are going to need to have that quarter inch of clearance around. It's sort of like a seam allowance on a pattern piece is what really makes things fit together. Same idea here. So to use this, again, I've got my guidelines drawn on here. Now like the quilt that I just showed you, I just use the seam lines as my guidelines. But if you either 
don't have seam lines where you want to quilt or you're just playing or maybe you just want to quilt a fun piece of fabric up and use it for a bag there's so many options this just draw out some quick lines use your rulers and you just bring it in start wherever you're gonna start and work your way around and then move excuse me, work your way around. I would stop with my needle down if I was gonna continue on here. So if I was gonna do a circle, I would just turn this around and come around this way. If I was gonna continue on doing, doing arcs or maybe I, this was gonna become a clamshell, I would continue on going this way. So, see, again, I should have had a ruler handle on there because it makes it so much easier to just Quilt around it, pick it up, move it over, quilt around, etc. It's just so much easier to get a hold of things. It also helps to preserve the coating on the back of your rulers. So we've done everything we can to make this coating as durable as possible. We've wrapped it around the edges of the rulers uh, and everything, but it is a coating. It is so it, it can wear off eventually, which is why we put it over the entire back surface of the ruler. Because if it wears off a little on the edges, your ruler is still not going to move because you still have coating all around in here. But having this ruler handle does help a lot because you're not constantly rubbing it along the edges with your fingertips. Because we've got oils in our fingertips and, uh, and there's alcohol in a lot of the, the lotions and of course hand sanitizer that we're all using right now. And alcohol is a great solvent, so that does wear these away a lot faster. So that ruler, ruler handle really helps both with these quilting rulers, also with all of our cutting rulers, any of those things. And since you can just pop it off and put it on the next ruler you're gonna use, it's just, it's great. It's really nice to have just a couple of these around, just so you can have, you know, one at your cutting table, one at your sewing table, maybe a couple at your cutting table, one to take with you when you go to classes. Uh, they're inexpensive, but they make such a huge difference. So again, that was our ruler handle. But I'm gonna show you how some of these shapes actually came together. So for example, this apple core, this was done using, excuse me, the four inch. So you can see again, I've got that quarter inch around there. So I had my lines drawn, I drew out a whole grid. I went around, I start here, I go around and I stopped when I got to that very top line. Like I said, we've got those lines on there to make things a lot easier, so I would stop turn this around and then come down this way, stop, go up this way, stop, and then just repeat on the next row, just alternating. So instead of it going this way, my ruler is now going this way. If that makes sense. Now we are gonna have more videos of me actually doing this or uh, an animation, I'm not sure yet how those are going to, to go together, but we will have more videos coming out and they will be on our website, quilterselect.com. Um, just show you all sorts of different shapes you can do with these. Just giving you a quick sneak peek. So again, apple cores, uh, clamshells. This one was done using the three inch. So clamshells, pretty simple. You just do those arcs all the way across. When you get to the end of the ruler, you just shift it over, keep going. Now in this case, I stopped here, but then I came back using the small side of the ruler all the way across. And then I went back this direction, use the big side and repeat it all the way down to get these really fun clamshells. You could skip coming back with the shorter side and then come back with the big side below it. And we do have all these markings on here to help you line it up. You can see here, so you could mark up, going from the bottom to the top, uh, line up this line to make sure that you're lining things up properly for your next row of clamshells and so on. Isn't she great? I mean, she's just great. Bree, thank you so much. And uh, I know you guys were paying attention because you weren't typing a bunch of stuff on the side. I want more from her. And honestly, now that's the second time I've seen the video. I'll probably watch it again. I mean, this ruler work 
is all new to me. Again, not the little straight one. I love this thing, but the curved ones. The other thing I want to reiterate, because this is fairly important, people who have gotten, whoops, have gotten these handles, um, in the past, when people had handles on their rulers, they held it with that. That is not the case in this. It's just simply to move it. You're still going to want your hand positioned as, it, as you would normally cut it. Because if you, and this is what I found with the old handles too. I don't, if you just press in this one spot, it's, you know, even though the thing doesn't slip, you're, mm -mm, don't do that, all right? Then the other thing that uh, Brie, I noticed, I don't know what machine she's working on, but um, there's a laser light. And I will tell you right now, on my Q20, I have a laser light. I think it's like 200 bucks add-on or 250 I don't know. But I love it. And the reason I love it is you're working with this larger machine space, and it can all become overwhelming. But that tells you exactly where the needle is going to go in, all right? And it's one of those things that, okay, so you have the Q20. How are you going to get it installed? because um, you're not taking it down to the store for that. My son-in-law, who is an engineer, could do it. It was fairly simple. The reason There were two reasons I physically couldn't do it. Number one, I have bifocals, and so anything that when you go down, I'm in, I'm in trouble. We have a safe in our house. It's on the floor. I can't open it, okay? So that's just that. And then the other thing is the screw or whatever you had to do was fairly tight, and I didn't have the finger uh, torque to do it. But it was I bought it without the laser light, and it was Mary Kay that called and said, get the laser light. You, you will thank me for it. To me, it's a non-negotiable. I mean, you're into that much money um, just get it. Just get it. If you're lucky and you haven't bought it yet, get it at the store. And, uh, and speaking of that, Janice up in Buffalo is going to go buy an embroidery machine. And she contacted me before. Yay, I'm doing it right. And I'm going to pop this in the uh, mail to her where she can get a hundred bucks off and, but she has 30 days to activate it. But Janice, I have to know your address. So I did email you back. If you guys are going to go buy a Bernina um, that's over a thousand bucks, I don't care if it's Serger, whatever, I can mail you one, but I'm supposed to get it to you before. And that seems to be working. Everybody's following along on that. Okay, Ronnie, we need to see her use the machine with the rulers. That would be awesome. So you actually want her stitching around the whole thing, Rondi. I think that's what you're saying rather than just show how she went. I can, I can request that. Again, she was this side short of her deathbed. And I'll tell you the other thing. You don't want to know the real secret. John edited it together. And at the very end, she goes, she just signed off. And I said, I know, she's sick. So she, she, we kind of, woo, drilled that out of there because I promised you we would do that today. All right. So, okay, Joan, I call it. What's the point? Because I was challenging myself with the points, and there are some, and some will not so much. Yeah, no kidding. Will the um, rulers be bundled or sold separ separately? They're sold separately, but we're giving you a really good price. And I asked uh, Bree, what do you think the best starting one is? And I think she said the medium one, which is three and one and a half. Or this one's four and two, okay? And then this one is six and one. I don't know. I think you could honestly flip a coin on it, okay? Um, okay, uh, Maria. So I have a domestic with a low shank. Does that mean I can't use the rulers? I don't know. I don't know. Call your um, sewing machine store and ask them. This is all brand new to me okay all brand new and it's wonderful because i love to learn okay rondy okay off subject matter how did your how did i quilt the spools quilt i haven't done it yet <laughs> i'm gonna get it to diane i'm gonna have diane do it i have i haven't done it yet donna i just 
I'm discombobiated. I'm just discombobiated. How many of you can raise your hand on that? Probably a lot. Um, yes, there is a contest, not a contest, a scavenger hunt, Nancy, and three people are going to win a box of my fabric. And as soon as we get off this live, John is going to go put it up on the front page, a bar that you can click through. All right. So, I mean, give us 30 seconds. That's what I would like. You will, uh, Maria. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Maria. You will need a low shank ruler. Um, the high shank ones are too thick to use in a low shank machine. Thank you, B and N. Thank you. I appreciate that. Like I said, it's, I, I have learned so much being involved with Quilter Select because that was a whole world, and I'm talking about embroidery and all that, that I was just steered clear from. I love it. I I can't believe how many doors I was shutting rather than opening the windows and let it all come in. And I'll tell you something else right now. Um, I'm on a sabbatical. And that's not really the right word, but what I'm doing is this. I kind of felt guilty working on my Sue Spargo. I kind of felt guilty working on my Cindy Needham and all that, but I learn. And so I thought, you know what? Knock it off. I had a talk with myself. I said, knock it off, Alex. Just go and have fun. Because whenever you try something new, you're going to learn. I say it every time. It broadens your tool belt the whole deal. So, okay. Yes. Uh, what the quilt show just said, I believe it is a problem. Yeah. You know, I wonder if you couldn't, well, no, cause they don't come in those weird shapes. So anyways, I'm continuing to pack. Tomorrow is D Christopher's thing. So yay. You don't want to miss that. And I got to make sure John gets her, um, um, set up pre because we'll be up in Napa suffering. <laughs> Uh, we're staying at where she holds Craft Napa. So I uh, have a lovely weekend. Let me tell you what's going on on Monday. Uh, I'm going to talk about batiks. And I mean, I don't have a lot to add to the equation, but I do want to talk about um, some of the things I consider when I'm working with batiks, okay? Then on Wednesday, we're going to do uh, stripes and polka dots. Love them. And then Speaking of rulers, on Friday, Lilo's going to do a deal on uh, ruler storage, and there were some pretty clever ideas. Remember, she does hire up, out. Oh, one other thing. If you want me to share your work up here, you send it to me, your image, at A-L-E-X. I'm looking at John. He came in here. Let me start over. A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at gmail and I will get it up. But give the forum a whirl. A couple of you have been having issues and yes, there are issues. Um, but to post, you need to be a subscribing member, but it is free to go and look at. And it's a, it has a plethora of really great imagery there. Just great. Okay, Batiks on Monday. What time? Same time, same place. 10 o'clock Pacific time. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> Since COVID started. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to um, leaving you with a thought that I want you to honor. Oh, I don't know if I can't. Wait a minute here. Let me go back to this thing. Celebrate heartily. Don't get yourself in trouble because it's not every day of the year you could say this. Bye-bye.